The main intelligence agency of Ukraine conducted an operation in Kharkiv region. During the operation it is, cleared, 400 hectares of forest and destroyed almost a regiment of occupiers in the north of Kharkiv region. Active action units of the main intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Artin, Kraken, and the International Legion carried out a complex successful operation to liberate a forest area located north of the settlement of Lipsy in the Kharkiv region. A battalion area of enemy defense was captured, three motorized rifle battalions, a storm detachment and a divorce company of the 7th separate motorized rifle regiment of the 11th army corps from the russian federation were destroyed a number of russian soldiers were also taken hostage as a result of operation <laughs> Another Russian Fab 500 bomb was found several kilometers from the village Netliudovo in the Shebekino urban district of Belgorod Oblast on the 10th of October, according to sources in the region's emergency services cited by the Russian news telegram channel Astra. No casualties or damage were reported. This incident reportedly marks at least the 128th airdropped bomb to fall on Russia and Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine from March to October this year, as calculated by Astra. Previously, UK intelligence reports suggested systematic issues such as aircrew fatigue, poor training, and unsafe tactical execution behind the repeated accidental bombings of Russian villages by Russian military aircraft. The Russian military has been modifying Soviet-era FAB bombs with unified gliding and correction module gliding kits to counter Ukrainian air defenses. These modifications add wings and satellite guidance to the bombs, allowing them to be launched from within Russian territory. However, this update has led to a recurring problem. The bombs often fail to reach their intended targets in Ukraine. Astra reports that FAB 250 and FAB 500 bombs are the most frequent types to fall short of their targets. Usually, these bombs do not explode upon unscheduled dropping and are later destroyed by explosive ordnance disposal teams. In a notable incident on the 4th of May, a Russian aircraft dropped a FAB 500 on Belgorod City, resulting in seven injuries, damage to 31 households and 10 vehicles. Authorities reportedly concealed the cause of the bomb's fall and its Russian origin. The issue is not limited to smaller bombs. In early July, a FAB 3000 bomb fell from a Russian aircraft onto Belgorod Oblast for the first time, exploding in a field near Shebekino. Due to its location, there were no casualties or injuries. The numbers in the names of these bombs indicate their total weight. The Russian army began actively using UMPK modified bombs in the spring of this year, with confirmed use of the winged FAB 3000 in Ukraine. Russian designers have extended the range of bombs by upgrading the UMPK kits. The design changes directly affect the aerodynamic qualities and, accordingly, the maximum range of the munition. Reliable data on the characteristics of the updated systems are unknown, but the basic kit increased the range of use to 60 to 70 kilometers. In addition, the new munition has a more complex design with a collapsible tail section attached to the bomb with eight screws. The innovation may be related to the technology used by the Russians to fill the bomb's body with explosives. The executions of Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region in October did not go unanswered. Airborne assault brigades of the armed forces of Ukraine specifically pursued members of the enemy's 155th Marine Brigade who were accused of atrocities and took revenge on them. The Ukrainian 82nd and 95th Airborne Assault Brigades, which occupied positions to the southeast and southwest of the 155th Brigade, respectively ambushed the Marines, Forbes writes. Ukrainian troops hate the 155th Marine Brigade more than most Russian units. The Russian Brigade allegedly beheaded four Ukrainians in August and displayed the severed heads on poles, behavior commonly associated with Islamic terrorist groups, the article notes. 
In October in Kursk region, the enemy managed to break through to the positions of Ukrainian operators. According to media reports, the occupiers stripped them and shot them in the head. On October the 14th, the 82nd separate Bukovina Airborne Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces reported on Telegram that its fighters in Kursk continue to eliminate Russian Marines. It can be said that the Ukrainian paratroopers have put this process on stream. Thus, the other day, the Bukovina Maroon Berets set up an ambush in which the killers from the 155th separate brigade of the Pacific Fleet Marines, who systematically violate military law, fell. The paratroopers added that the hunt for the freaks was successful. Not a single one of the Russian Marine scoundrels remained alive. Recently, deep state analysts reported that the Russians launched an attack near the village of Zeleniput in the Kursk region and managed to capture Ukrainian drone operators and contractors. According to them, the enemy shot the Ukrainian defenders. The head of the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Andriy Sibia, called for the issuance of warrants from the International Criminal Court for the arrest of Russians involved in the murders of Ukrainian prisoners of war. Forbes wrote that executing Ukrainians during a full-scale war would likely backfire on the Russians. Such actions would almost certainly guarantee that the atrocities they commit would eventually come back to haunt them. Ukrainian authorities have reported that since the start of the full-scale invasion, the Russians have executed more than 100 Ukrainians who were captured. Most of our compatriots have died at the hands of the occupiers this year.